ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮುದಿಥೇನ ತಸ್ಮೀಗುರುವೇ ನಮ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಾಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ We're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 10. And today's texts are 1 through 4, if I'm not incorrect. Maybe I am incorrect. What is it? What is it? That was yesterday. Okay, so 6, 10. Good, thank you. This takes up the chapter entitled The Battle Between the Demigods and Ritrasura. The first text reads, Sri Shukadev Goswami said, after instructing Indra in this way, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, the cause of the cosmic manifestation then and there disappeared from the presence of the onlooking demigods. Two, O King Parikshit, following the Lord's instructions, the demigods approached Didhichi, the son of Atarva. He was very liberal, and when they begged him to give them his body, he at once partially agreed. However, just to hear religious instructions from them, He smiled and jokingly spoke as follows. Three, O oh, elevated demigods, at the time of death, severe, unbearable pain takes away the consciousness of all living entities who have accepted material bodies. Don't you know about this pain? Four, in this material world, every living entity is very much addicted to his material body. Struggling to keep his body forever, everyone tries to protect it by all means, even at the sacrifice of all his possessions. Therefore, who would be prepared to deliver his body to anyone, even if it were demanded by Lord Vishnu? And this is the Sanskrit from today's verse. Jiji Vishnu Nam Jeevanam Jeevivishunam Jeevanam Jeevivishunam Jeevanam Atma Krishta Ihepsita Atma Prishta Ihepsitaha Atma Prishta Ihepsitaha Ka Utsaheta Tung Datum Ka Utas Ta Utsaheta Tung Datum Bikshamanaya Bikshamanaya Vishnave Bikshamanaya Vishnave Bikshamanaya Vishnave Jivishi Jivishi Shunam Jivanam Jivishi Shunam Jivanam Atma Prishta Ihepsataha Atma Prishta Ihepsataha Kautsaheta Tang Tathum Bikshamanaya Vishnave Bikshamanaya Vishnave Jijivishunam Aspiring to remain alive Jivanam Of all living entities Atma The body Prishta Very dear Iha Here Ipsataha, desired, kaha, who, 
utsaheta can bear tum that body datum to deliver vikshamanaya begging vishnave even to lord vishnu Translation, in this material world, every living entity is very much addicted to his material body. Struggling to keep his body forever, everyone tries to protect it by all means, even at the sacrifice of all his possessions. Therefore, who would be prepared to deliver his body to anyone, even if it were demanded by Lord Vishnu? Would you like to repeat? Yes. yes. Say yes. Yes. In this material world, this material world every, living entity every living entity is very much addicted to his material body. Struggling to keep his body forever, everyone tries to protect it by all means, even at the sacrifice of all his possessions. Even at the sacrifice of all his possessions. Therefore, who would be prepared to deliver his body to anyone? Who would be prepared to deliver his body to anyone? Even if it were demanded by Lord Vishnu. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. It is said, Atmanam Sarvato Rakshe Tato Dharmam Tato Dhanam. One must protect his body by all means. Then he may protect his religious principles and thereafter his possessions. This is the natural desire of all living entities. No one wants to give up his body unless it is forcibly given away. Even though the demigods said that they were demanding Datichi's body for their benefit in accordance with the order of Lord Vishnu, Daditi superficially refused to give them his body. So Daditi is one of our great heroes because he was ready to give up anything, including his bones, his body, for the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is attained only by spiritual strength, as is um, mentioned by Krishna in the 8th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, that one must have yoga balena, and that means spiritual strength developed over a lifetime of practice. In order to be able to uh, give up the body, he says, Prayana kale manasachalena bhaktya yukto yoga balena chaiva pruvor madye pranam avesha samyak satam param purusham upaiti divyam. So <clears throat> in this, uh, he describes prayana kale at the end of the body, prayana kale manasachalena. Although the, the flickering mind, he's able, the yogi, because of yoga balena, is able to fix it between the eyebrows and be very deliberate at the time of death in thinking of the Supreme. And in this purport, Prabhupada describes how this yoga balena is not, um, <clears throat> does not come without practice of some kind of yoga throughout one's lifetime. To have the wherewithal at the time that one leaves the body to be able to remember Krishna uh, requires such practice throughout life. So, what you're all doing, fixing your mind on the deity and on the holy name and on your service. This is uh, the most useful thing that one can do uh, in the human form of life. It's an opportunity to fix the mind. The mind, of course, accompanies us from one body to the next. And <clears throat> really, the, it's, a, it's important to understand Krishna says in the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, what's actually happening. Because he says, Yatanto yoginas chainam pashyantyamanyavastitam. That uh, a person who's studied the science of the soul and what it means to leave one's body uh, can see what's going on. Otherwise, ukramantam sitam bhapi bhujanan bhav kunam ditam vimura nana pashyanti pashyanti. Uh, a person who doesn't uh, know, who's in ignorance, doesn't see ukramantam when stepping out of the body. It means ukramantam. Ut, out, 
Krama, he's stepping out of the body. Ukramanta stitam bhapi bunjanan vagunan vitam vimudha na upashanti. A person who, who lives in ignorance, thinking I'm this body, doesn't see what takes place uh, in the change of body. But we can know this uh, <clears throat> by studying the Shastra and also through personal realization, which is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. And I'm going to read you from Shastra that will change your vision of birth and death forever. It's from the 11th canto. So you prepare to be amazed. And if you don't want to be amazed, you can step out of the room for a minute and come back in. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> the, the, the person who's advancing in spiritual life is described in many places in the Bhagavad Gita as <clears throat> being aware that he or she is within the body but is um, <clears throat> only observing that the body is going on as a, a mechanical, biomechanical uh, entity. Like, naiva kinshit koro miti yukto manyete tattva vit pashan shunvan svisan jigran ashnan gachan supan svisan pralapan vishrinan grinnan unmishan nimishan napi indriyan indriyarteshu vartanta iti tarayan. He said, naiva kinshit koro miti. The person who is in uh, a divine consciousness, aware of oneself and the super self, uh, doesn't consider at all, naive, eva, not at all, that uh, I'm doing anything. Because the, the advanced person sees, although the body's moving in different ways, opening and closing the eyes, accepting things, eating things, digesting things, and so forth, uh, that the body's going on mechanically, but I'm not involved in that. Are you involved in that? Say no. 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 <laughs> it's just like when you eat something, the digestive process is taking place just as if you loaded up a dishwasher, closed the door, and then you hear the, the gears moving or whatever it's inside. And, uh, and the, it goes through its various cycles, so the body moves like that. Now here's the part where you're going to be amazed. So feel free to step out if you don't want to be. This is from the 11th canto, 22nd chapter. This is um, Lord Krishna speaking to Uddhava. He starts off on, I'm going to read just a couple of verses, and you won't be bored or disappointed. This starts 11.22.38. The mind bound to the reactions of fruit of work always meditates on the objects of the senses both those that are seen in this world and those that are heard about from Vedic authority. Consequently, the mind appears to come into being and to suffer annihilation along with its objects of perception. And thus, its ability to distinguish past and future is lost. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Kashtuba, yes. yes. OK. When the living entity passes from the present body to the next body, which is created by his own karma, he becomes abs absorbed in the pleasurable and painful sensations of the new body and completely forgets the experience of the previous body. This total forgetfulness of one's previous material identity, which comes about for one reason or another, is called death. Told you. O oh, most charitable Uddhava, what is called birth is simply a person's total identification with a new body. One accepts the new body just as one completely accepts the experience of a dream or a fantasy as reality. Just as a person experiencing a dream or daydream does not remember his previous dreams or daydreams, a person situated in his present body although having existed prior to it, thinks that he has only recently come into being. So the Hamsa Avatar also describes how the way in which, uh, as living beings in, uh, involved with matter, although we, um, thankfully to the Vedic knowledge, we can understand we have nothing to do with it. Asango khyayam purushaha, we really have nothing to do with matter at all. However, <clears throat> there's a, a way in which I become entangled in the material world due, due to my attachment to, to it. Jayato vishayam pumsam sangas te shubhajayate. I develop a sangha, means a connection to it, an artificial relationship with matter. 
Now, what happens is there's, there's facility for one to do this in a very complete way. And Hamsavatar describes in his teachings how when a living being comes out uh, into the world, uh, the mind uh, has embedded within it the sense objects. Uh, this, and the, the mind embeds itself within the sense objects, and the sense objects then are also embedded within the mind. So it's no wonder then that when we come out of the womb, even after being in a situation where we might be fully aware that I have nothing to do with this world, right? Because we know this from Kapila Dave's teachings and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu repeated the same thing to his mother that uh, there's a way in which I, I can see that I have nothing to do at all with, with the material nature. The living being in the womb actually prays that um, I don't want to come out because I know what will happen. And what does happen is uh, due, due to the trauma of childbirth, it's not just that, but it's also that the senses then become externalized. And the externalization of the senses is described by Hamsa Avatar that the natural way in which the mind is embedded in the sense objects, sense objects that are embedded in the mind, they have that uh, intimate connection right away. And I again become connected with the modes of material nature and the material world. And so this is um, a, uh, an entanglement for the living being. And it's carried from one uh, body to the next and until one uh, oh. dissolves that uh, subtle material body by the practice of bhakti. And that's described by Kapila Dev in that wonderful verse in which he said, just as food is dissolved within the stomach or digested, rather, in a similar way, when one takes the process of bhakti, one's subtle material body is digested by the process of bhakti. And then one can come to freedom. So this verse particularly today is, is a, some uh, banter that's going on, although highly elevated banter, between the um, demigods who have been instructed by Lord Vishnu to come and ask Didichi for his bones. And Didichi, who's cool as a cucumber, he's sitting back um, ready to give his body, but he wants to bring out this topic. He's enjoying life. That, uh, you know, yeah, maybe I'll give it to you, maybe I won't. Don't you know how hard it is to give? Just he likes to hear uh, from them. So oh, this is for Vishnu, and uh, you're not your body and everything, and he knows that. And so this is the benefit of, of being enlightened with spiritual knowledge, especially from the Bhagavad Gita and from one's own practice, is that one's not obligated uh, to anything in the material world, including one's uh, material body which as is indicated here, is a, a great burden for a living being like myself to uh, take on uh, the uh, objects of the senses in this world in, 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 in their different forms and varieties and to think they're mine. And uh, again, the psychology of this is described in the Bhagavatam and it's very helpful to know. The Shukadev Goswami in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, 14th chapter, near the end, it gives a description to uh, uh, Prikshit Maharaj of why it was, and this sounds a little esoteric in relationship to the topic at hand, but why it was that the uh, residents of Vrindavan, especially the mothers, became infinitely more attached to their sons and why the cows became infinitely more attached to their calves after they came back, uh, apparently from playing. <laughs> when Brahma had stolen away the calves and, and the coward boys, and then um, Krishna reproduced all of them exactly as they were before, and then they went back into Vrindavan. Then all the mothers and the parents became more attached to their sons than they had before. And, uh, Similarly, as we know, the cows uh, became more attached to their offspring. So <clears throat> Prikshit wanted to know about this. And one of the answers is in the context of this uh, basic idea of self-realization, which Shukadeva Goswami says that uh, <clears throat> understand what we're attached to. Why are we attached? What are we actually attached to? 
I'm attached to my body, says Sukadev, uh, because I'm in it. Otherwise, I'm not attached to it. As soon as I leave the body, it's, it's not very attractive. Any, it's not attractive to anybody. It immediately gets thrown away. I've seen this before. I've been with people who left their body, like I was with my mother when she left. And right afterwards, they just took the body away. Uh, wasn't a, there was no animation there. Soul had gone. And no longer any interest anybody had. Except there's a little bit. There's some ceremonial part because you're respecting the fact that somebody had been in the body, that a soul had been there. But that's about it. Otherwise, it gets burned to ashes. So Shukadev Goswami says, now consider how much, uh, how valuable uh, the soul is because you're in the body. That's why you're attached to the body. And you're willing, he says in a similar way as in the verse today, to sacrifice all other things uh, f for what you think is yourself, your body. So then he says, uh, this is a misplaced identity. You think you're your body, but you're not. So then he says, Atmanam Akilatmanam. So now understand, if you're attached to yourself as a spiritual soul, then uh, see that there's a self of yourself. What is the soul of your soul? Atmanam Akilatmanam. There's a soul of all souls. So how much more will one be attached uh, to the source of oneself than even oneself? And that is the answer to the puzzle of why the residents of Vrindavan became so attached. Because everyone's attracted to the supreme soul. And when one then realizes one's identity as part and parcel of Krishna and then becomes attached to Krishna, transfers one's attachment attachment to Krishna. One can then see, as much as I'm attached to my material body and mind and everything in relationship with it, then I should, uh, by the process of bhakti, transfer that attachment to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and His service. So those are a few preliminary thoughts, and then we'll take some reflections. Reflection means anything that you heard so far that's stuck in your mind, or if you have an inquiry that will bring out something important that's right to the point. Yes. We have a microphone also. You're good. Well, I could say more about the transformation or uh, the, the dissolving of the, you said, the, the physical body. So actually, when you said that, it reminded me of ways in which we could talk about both the material, the gross material body and the subtle material body. So ways in which the, the gross material body is transformed through bhakti are described in Srimad Bhagavatam as an example in the teachings of Devahuti, which are statements made from Devahuti to her son, uh, Kapiladev. Uh, she says, Aho bhattashwa pachato gariyanya jiva grevarta te nama tubyam te pusta paste juhu sasna arya brahmanachur nama grananti ete. And this means that, oh, how wonderful it is that if somebody is uh, taking the process of bhakti, especially, she's talking about chanting the holy names. If you could say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. You can do it. They said, even if you do it once, uh, with just a little bit, like with the tip of your tongue, Hare Krishna, then he says, uh, such an utterance is so uh, powerful, uh, the holy name is so powerful, that the, the person, no matter what uh, their gross material body, uh, what condition it's in, it becomes transformed, so much so that the, the body of a shwapacha, or a person who... Uh, you know, for a celebratory dinner at Thanksgiving, cooks dogs. Um, this person who comes from that kind of background, if they chant Hare Krishna, then they, their body uh, becomes 
purified to the, to the extent that it's considered that such a person could perform Vedic sacrifice, which means that their body is transformed. This is given as evidence by our, all our acharyas like Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, Sridhar Swami, and so forth, indicating that, that the body becomes uh, transformed. And similarly, in the Padma Purana, it is mentioned, Aparabdha uh, Palam Papam, Kutam Bijam Palon Mukham, Krame Naiva Praliyante Vishnu Bhakti Ratatmanam, which means that uh, through the various, the various stages of karma, which uh, are like a seed growing in a garden that come eventually to manifest this gross material body, uh, become destroyed by the process of bhakti, by worshipping Lord Vishnu. And uh, then, of course, everyone knows from the Brahma Samiti, Astvindra Gopa Matavendra Mahosa Karma, Bandana Rupa Palabhajana Matanoti Karmani Nirdahati Kintu Chabhakti Bhajam, Govinda Madi Purusham Tamahambajami, Brahma confirms that if someone is engaged in bhakti bhajan, you're engaged in bhakti bhajan, right? Chanting Hare Krishna. Then uh, that's a person, uh, karmani nirdahati, their karma is, is destroyed by that process. And then, of course, uh, the subtle body, as, as I mentioned, the verse from uh, Kapila Dev said, the subtle body also becomes destroyed. And this is important because as... Krishna mentions to Uddhava in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam in the story of the Avanti Brahmana, the, the mind has fearsome godlike powers over the soul. And it is only for the sake of this mind that one is taking one birth after another and assuming false identities. And therefore, it's absolutely necessary for the subtle material body headed by the mind or the, the organizer, the, which is the mind called the sense within, has to be transformed spiritually. And that's done through the process of, of uh, bhakti, especially chanting the holy names of the Lord. And of course, a, any kind of transformation, as you mentioned, uh, installing the deities, uh, Krishna uh, agrees to manifest in various ways. And in the ways in which we follow the scripture to install the deities or do any other process, uh, we are able to transform uh, matter into spirit, as confirmed from Bhagavad Gita. Brahmarpanam brahmahavir brahmagnau brahmanohutam brahmaiva tenagantavyam brahmakarma samadhina. Krishna says in the context of performing a Vedic yagya that uh, all the implements used to perform the yagya uh, become spiritual because they're being used in the service of the Supreme. So matter also comes from Krishna, and when it's used for a higher purpose, it also transforms into spirit. Just as, if, just as when you take an iron rod and you put it into the fire, and you leave it in the fire long enough, it becomes red hot and it becomes fire. It transforms. So all things are transformable when engaged in the service of the Lord. Mahotsava Prabhu? Oh, yes. He wants me to comment on a, a statement that's coming in the purport. I'll just repeat. Yeah. Um, as the Dichi Muni gave up his body. I'll repeat because there's people online that can't hear you, but I'll. Similarly, this Krishna consciousness movement is a call, call for the intelligent men and women of this world. For the intelligent men and women of this world to come forward. To come forward. And sacrifice their lives. And sacrifice their lives. For the most noble cause. For the most noble cause. For the re-spiritualization of human society. For the re-spiritualization of human society. So um, this is recommended as the highest form of uh, bhakti and devotional service. This is recommended as the highest method of bhakti and devotional service. And it brings to light the statement of Shukadeva Goswami in regards to Lord Shiva's drinking the ocean of poison. It brings to light the statement of uh, Shukadeva Goswami in relationship 
to Lord Shiva's drinking the ocean, ocean of poison to save all the living entities by churning the milk ocean. That saintly persons almost always accept voluntary That saintly persons almost always accept voluntary suffering. For the sake of uplifting the living entities. For the sake of uplifting the living entities. This constitutes the highest method of worship. This constitutes the highest method of worship. To the Supreme Personality of God in who lives in everyone's heart. And you want me to comment on that? Yes. <laughs> Jiva Goswami says, unless the, the bhaktas show compassion to others, by going out into the world, just says, Haridas Thakur, Advaita Charya, Lord Inanda, all of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associates by the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did, and uh, tries to give mercy to the individual souls, then uh, whatever other sacrifices they perform uh, will not be effective. Be, he's, and he gives the example, of if you perform a fire ceremony, but then the fire goes out, where it never starts, and you just have ashes. I guess it would have to go out to have ashes. <coughs> then, uh, then you offer a ghee onto that. There's no fire to consume mm -hmm. the ghee. So similarly, uh, one has to, um, one has to show compassion to others. This is also confirmed in the uh, Bhagavatam, uh, in which um, is to, to describe the <coughs> various um, levels of devotees. Uh, the lowest of, of devotees, the Kanishta Adhikari, Acharya Meva Hariye Pujam Yashariye Te Natad Bhakti Shu Chanyeshu Sabhakta Prakrita Smita, the materialistic devotee is described as one who doesn't know how to do good for others. Can't recognize a devotee, doesn't know how to do good for others. That is in a practical way, it's important, uh, especially in our movement, where Goshti and Nandis, the reason we take the trouble to live in these big cities like New York City. So it's, it's a lot of trouble. I've been hearing from a lot of devotees, like it's hard to find a place to, to camp out here uh, near the Bhakti Center. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and, you know, to cram into the city, to get around here, to deal with the, with the oppressive energy of the city and so forth, is very difficult. But it, it's uh, the highest kind of sacrifice that, the, that is epitomized by the, the mood of Prahlad Maharaj when he says, I don't want to live in the forest, I want to live in these cities so I can be close to everybody to give them an opportunity to take to Krishna consciousness. This Krishna, of course, says in the Bhagavad Gita, this uh, kind of giving to others Krishna consciousness is the most pleasing to him. The devotees become dear to him by doing that. It's the highest kind of service, he says. And uh, similarly, uh, you know, we, we also test our own mantras, just as in previous ages, in the Vedic times. The brahmanas would test their mantras by sacrificing an animal, and then they'd bring it back to life by chanting the Vedic mantra. Does anybody know those mantras? Oh, it's all summarized. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. So in a similar way, uh, it's described how maya mrgam dayetayet sitamun vadavad uh, this verse from Karabhajana Muni, I just gave the third line of it, but it describes how uh, in the Kali Yuga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sees everyone's maya mrgam. They become like animals because of the oppressive nature of maya. And therefore, Maya Mrgam, he's running after them. So similarly, he asks all of us to run after them. So uh, we test our mantras also. We chant the mantra. And we have to test it on ourselves and see how we're being revived. But then also, we, take, we can take it out and test it to other people. Say, come here for a sec. Here, chant this mantra. You know, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And then uh, they become alive. So we test the mantra, see how those, beginning with myself, who become like an animal or less than an animal now have been revived by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra and we see how by giving it to others they become revived and we see the efficacy of the mantra. We, it proves how powerful it is. Tapyante Lukata Pena. Yes, we have 30 seconds. Hare Krishna. Well, this uh, is a transformation, just as I mentioned the transformation of iron rod. So similarly in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, 
uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu describes the way in which the heart becomes transformed. And this is uh, noted in, in several places. Uh, one place he describes, does Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that when the, the heart is touched by a ray of the internal energy, that it softens. And then it becomes um, filled with uh, emotions. And uh, then this is when bhava begins in the heart of the soul. And, the, and at, these, at this time, of course, this is a lengthy discussion, but there, there's a gradual transformation beginning with shraddha, going all the way to prema, within the heart of the devotee. Which is, we say heart, this is the chitta or the region of, which, uh, of our experience. And there's a lot of mechanism described in there especially if you read the Yoga Sutra, there's descriptions of the hierarchy of the, the senses and then the mind and the intelligence. This is also uh, commented on uh, by Krishna at the end of the third chapter in Indriyani, Priyani, Ahur, etc. And so uh, the, the transformation takes place, especially by chanting Hare Krishna. This verse, uh, which I'm about to recite, was given by uh, Srila Ishvara Puri to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, after his initiation. Mahaprabhu got the mantra he began chanting it and he came back to confirm with his guru that he got the right mantra. He said, you know, I'm going crazy chanting this. Did I get the right mantra? So his spiritual master said, evam vrata svapriya nama kirtya jitana rago jita chuta ucha hasatyato rautiti rauti gayati unmaravan rititi loka bhayaha that uh, this is what should happen. When you take the vrat to chant Hare Krishna, then gradually become attached to the mantra in a very personal way. And then, dhruta chitta, the heart begins to melt, it softens, and becomes open to the process of bhakti. And then, ultimately, one's uh, subtle body becomes completely transformed and uh, purified by the process of devotional service. And uh, although living in this world, one has uh, admission into the spiritual world simultaneously. This is mentioned by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the, in the metaphor of the creeper that grows from the heart of the devotee to the spiritual world. And evidenced in the conversation between uh, Vidura and Sri Uddhava, when Vidura first approaches him and asks him to speak on spiritual topics, Vidura has to wrest himself away from the spiritual world and come back into the present context so he can actually speak. So there's a dual citizenship that takes place even while one lives in this body. The Jiva Mukta is living uh, in this world, in this body, but at the same time is uh, fully present in the spiritual world by dint of purifying the, the subtle material body. And that brings us to the, the end of another Srimad Bhagavatam class here at the Bhakti Center. And I thank you very much for... Um, giving me the opportunity to have your association here. Thank you very much. And uh, please say Hare Krishna to everybody online. Point it back at the audience and say Hare Krishna. Raise your hands. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Come on, this is the Bhakti Center. You've got to be more enthusiastic than that. Say Hare Krishna to all the nice devotees online. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Patitanam Pavani Jai Monday, Hari Bo. Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, hey, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman, Nachari Armarman.